Sorry if you can't see me, I'm a bit low down. If you were lucky enough to be near the front, you saw me do an amazing landing. <laughs> you good? I get it, it's hard to rain as well. Okay. Hi folks, uh, I need to check that you are all awake given the rain, you probably are. So, the letters BBC are supposed to stand for the British Broadcasting Corporation. But given their recent actions, I think that Biased Bigotry Corporation is a bit more fitting. So, I need you to tell me, what does BBC stand for? Biased Bigotry Corporation. Sorry, what does the BBC stand for? Biased Bigotry Corporation. The BBC also claims that they are impartial. Platforming hate is not impartial. Can I get you to say that with me so that they over there know platforming hate is not impartial? Platforming hate is not impartial. Platforming hate is not impartial. Platforming hate is not impartial. Thank you all so much for coming out to today's protest. Uh, we really appreciate everyone who's taken the time to be here today, uh, particularly our, follow, uh, sorry, our fellow organisers and everyone volunteering their time to help with us today. We have an amazing lineup of speakers. Uh, we plan to finish no later than 5pm. I appreciate we're running a little bit late. Uh, we have some housekeeping rules. COVID-19 is still an issue regardless of any changes in government guidance. Unless you are exempt, please wear a mask at all times. Try your best to socially distance yourself from people who are not in your household or support bubble. Our speakers will be wearing masks when not at the microphone, unless they are exempt. We also highly recommend taking a COVID test after today if you can, to ensure that those you and those around you are kept safe. Lateral flow tests can be ordered online for free and sent to your door, though we appreciate that there are shortages. There are stewards and first aiders spaced out. You can identify some of them by their high-vis jackets or armbands that they're wearing. We have a first aid point situated by the stage where we'll have a first aider and a steward if you require any assistance or want to locate someone easily. In case of a serious medical emergency, please just call 999. Unfortunately, the BSL interpreters couldn't make it today as one of them came down with COVID um, and it's a two person job, which meant they both couldn't do it. We tried to get last minute interpreters, but unfortunately we couldn't. Um, any speeches that we're able to record and put online, which depends on the weather, but if we do get any online, we'll try and get captions on them as soon as we can. Be aware of those around you. If you're made aware of someone that would benefit from being closer to the stage, please assist them in moving forward safely. People around you might be disabled or neurodiverse or experience sensory overload, so be prepared to give people space or help them to locate stewards or first aiders. To those under the age of 18 present today, please don't hesitate to come and find our, find our first aid point if you require any support. Please also be aware that speeches today may contain mentions of transphobic violence, sexual assault and trauma. So why are we here today? On the 29th of October, we sent an open letter to the BBC that was signed by over 20,000 people. Regarding their October article, we are being pressured into sex by trans women, written by Caroline Lowbridge. That article doesn't meet the standards of basic human decency, let alone BBC's own publishing guidelines and the requirements set out by Ofcom. It platformed groups like the LGB Alliance, who might as well be renamed the Bored Angry Straight People Alliance, and, <laughs> and the Get The L Out, which is the transphobic hate group that forced its way into the front of the Pride, front of Pride in London. Not to mention Lily Cade. The BBC was so desperate to create the, this dangerous hit piece that they platformed a known rapist to sell a fabricated story about trans women being sexual predators. They handed the microphone to an actual sexual predator. The BBC have yet to take accountability or apologise for this article. However, it is only one of the example, the one example, sorry, of a continuous downward spiral of problematic coverage, with the spotlight being on the trans community. Much like how it is with the rest of the mainstream UK media, the BBC has still not addressed the article 
being localized exclusively for countries with incredibly high trans murder rates, such as Brazil, and the risk inherent in doing so. The piece still does not contextualize that the only trans woman given prominent room to speak is known for backing up anti-trans perspectives or that she or that she shares a statement about trans women really just being straight men despite having no evidence for such a claim without critique without critique or balance this article has a plethora of issues that we have addressed as have the many people who have submitted official complaints their response was inadequate and in many places outright unprofessional we believe that it is vital to put pressure on the BBC as a state-sanctioned corporation to not only follow their own publishing guidelines, but to also follow the due imparti impartiality rules set out by Ofcom to prevent any further bigotry. We want to put that pressure through the mean. Sorry, which one? Sorry. We want to put on that pressure through the means of expressing our human right to protest against injustices. Let's make sure that, the, that London and the BBC know exactly why we're here today. Let me hear you say, trans rights are human rights. 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 Platforming hate is not impartial. Platforming hate is not impartial. When trans rights are under attack, what do we do? Fight back. Thank you.